see there. I think I got the volume right this time. I don't know. Back kitty gates, let me know if the uh, volume sounds good or not. Um, hey, look who's here. How are you doing? I see a couple other people, I think. Joanna's also here. Um, give it a little bit of a little bit of time for people to come in, right? Because um, today we are going to cover a bit of interactive. Um, kind of going over what uh, what are some cool things I find in interactive as somebody who uses it. Um, mainly, how does it make my life easier uh, more than anything, right? Because that's what we're all trying to do: make life easier for us as the designers or the the button pushers however you want to uh to call us i'm sure there's other ways or other words for it right um anybody's been put in our spot so um show of hands in chat or messages really because not everybody's got hands right um who has not heard of interactive i'm sure everybody here um <laughs> you just say it's a dream come true <laughs> right so um I'm, I'm familiar with that everybody probably knows what interactive is at a high level um, but to give the kind of spiel of it you know uh, interactive is a zero uh, zero client install so it is somewhere it's installed on a server um, somewhere it doesn't have to be on the person's machine um, and so it makes it uh, lightweight so that way you don't have to have the software if you've got access to a computer and technically to the internet uh, you can access your interactive session as long as you have it exposed externally that is but uh, for our use case today we are running a simulation of the server using Tomcat um, so that way I'm just using Google Chrome to log into my interactive session so uh, one thing I will throw out there though is that this is not a, um, a pure install of interactive meaning I didn't have to log in per se, we're using what's called our demo solution. And what that means is down here at the bottom, I have a little demo panel that allows me to switch roles or users for the case of interactive. And you'll see me do that a couple times today, um, but I just wanted to, to give insight of, this is not what you would normally see in, let's say a production environment. This is purely a demo environment uh, for this use case. So, and millennials here and she can hear now so that's awesome yeah, you don't want to broadcast my voice out to the toronto office um people will probably start asking me why i'm causing problems up there i don't know you don't want to do that uh joanna um but i know scott didn't say he was gonna make it today so i don't have him bugging me so by any questions you guys have or anything you want to see in interactive specifically just let me know i'm gonna kind of walk through some stuff that i had in place but uh, please keep in mind, none of this is scripted. So where I go is purely by what I feel like is fun. So uh, redirect me, stop me, whatever the case may be, it's up to you guys. So we go through uh, looking at our users real quick and, and there's a lot of different roles you can use in interactive. You have what's called a transactional user, meaning you're coming in to do a one-off Thing. So whether you're creating a single piece of communication uh, to be sent to a customer or client, or you're doing more of what's called remote authoring or our business user uh, to where you're making content changes. That way uh, you can update a piece of a letter or a piece of, uh, let's say an invoice. That way the next time it runs, it will run with the latest version of your content changes. So um, that's what we consider, you know, Bob the Builder here. Um, if you guys remember from a previous stream, I guess I have never changed his name back. Uh, those of us internally know this as Domenico. But uh, for this purpose today, he's Bob. And then Patricia would be his supervisor. So she's going to make all the approval changes. Uh, anything he does has to go through her. Um, she has to approve it. And once she approves it, it can go to production, which I will show one of those use cases today. And we have these other rules, which I'll get into a little bit later. We're not going to go through them all. I uh, just want to keep it high level here. So let's log in as Bob. And what does our look or what does our dashboard look like as Bob? So when we first log in, essentially as a template designer or a normal content editor, 
we, we would see an inbox, but currently it's empty because we haven't done any work. This is a brand new, I think it's a brand new install. I might have one or two things here, but um, the concept is we don't have a lot of um, previous content here. So if we go to content manager up at the top, we're gonna have access to a bunch of different, oh, I do remember this, right? We, we did this because of Mike um, on a previous stream, but we have a bunch of different templates that can be worked on. And these are, let's say, pieces of communication. So we have a, a business auto policy. We have our um, renewal as well as our welcome letter and welcome kit. So these are some of the things that we could be working on today. Um, in addition to that, templates in interactive uh, can be composed of blocks, right? So we can view the blocks individually here to where we can just see the individual pieces of content um, without the scope of the template per se. Um, though I do want to go into uh, one of the cool features I love about the newest version. I believe it came out in 12.0, um, being able to view a block in context. And, and I can get into that a little bit more of that um, a little bit later. Um, but we have access to display rules. Um, in a different role, we can access uh, styling and so forth. So how about we just kind of dive in and then we'll go from there to see what, what we want to do. So if I'm, let's say I'm Kevin, not Kevin, sorry, Bob here. And if we, we view the welcome kit and we use the welcome kit a lot because um, this is a great example of a omni-channel piece of communication. It, it's got a letter, it's got an email as well as it's got a dynamic communication. And in interactive, you can actually see the dynamic communication. So if I were to proof this in dynamic communication, and for those who don't know what a dynamic communication is or a DC, it's essentially our HTML5 version of a document. So this is what we would send out um, as HTML5. It is fully responsive. We can navigate it in interactive. So I find that is a, a really cool feature that the ability to say, you know what, not only can I see my DC, I can still navigate through it. It's not snapshots, It's this is live view. Um, as somebody who's making, making changes to see what happens, um, it's always good to, to actually get your hands on it and play with it, right? It's not a static uh, feeling. In addition to that, we can change our responsiveness. So what does this look like in a tablet view? Well, what about tablet that's landscape or portrait? Um, okay, I wanna check it on phone. I can switch it to the phone view. And now I get to see what my dynamic communication would look like on a phone. So that way, as maybe a supervisor, I, I wanna make all these um, edits or I want to view what has been changed I, I get the full scope of it. I don't have to have a deployment package delivered to me over email. I don't have to go through some ad hoc processes that are not part of our, let's just say, efficient business cycle. Um, so that, that's what's really cool of interactive allowing DC to be part of a, a preview mode now. And I will say as a sneak peek to um, R13 or release 13 that comes out, um, I think next year, we are gonna give the ability for people to create their own preview um, viewports essentially. So if you wanna see what a smartphone looks like or you wanna view what it's gonna look like as a push notification on your phone, that is coming. So you'll be able to design your own preview profiles. Um, I'm super excited about that as the content editor for pre-sales. So I can't wait for that that piece to come out, right? Bad Kitty Gates, boom. So um, also, you guys do know our little emote, um, the proof emote for those that are subscribers, right? So we always talk about in designer being able to use that magic finger, the proof, right? So if I hit F6, this also works in interactive. So in interactive, you can actually hit F6 and go straight to proof or to preview. Um, because as a designer, you're so used to hitting that button. We went ahead and put that feature into interactive. So that way, um, that same, let's say, uh, muscle memory finger stroke is still happening. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, join a Mrs. Interactive. Yeah, she did mention um, it's been a while since she's been in Interactive. So what I'm trying to find, what about F3? So yeah, F3 does work as well. Um, let me see. What did F3 do to me? Oh yes, F3 creates a test ticket. So um, you're getting ahead of the class here uh, at Kitty Gates. It reminds me of a, um, a student you once had that was trying to uh, tell people what to do, you know, circumventing the, the training class. I, I, I don't know who that is by any means. You wanna do 12 pop-up shop? <laughs> <laughs> and train the trainer yeah so bad kitty gates knows about somebody that's like that right so to to what bad kitty gates mentioned is we have the ability and we can go through the icons here i don't want to make it a deep dive essentially but um when <laughs> no it only makes me look bad if i tell them uh bad kitty gates who that student was um i plead the fifth so not only am I in a remote authoring view here, so I'm, I'm modifying content, right? That's the whole point of this interactive is I'm changing content at blocks, but what is this gonna do to somebody who's, let's say a transactional user? Um, in the past, what we've had to do is we've had to promote it to a, a certain state and go to another environment and test the ticket that way. Now we have a simple icon up here at the top that's a test ticket. You can just hit F3 and um, Sorry, because the way my keyboard's set up, I have to hit function. But you can, what it does is it creates a new window of what's called a test ticket mode. So if you have any um, blocks that require tasks or you wanna see what this looks like in a um, transactional user's point of view, you can do that. So let's, let's go ahead and create a task because right now one doesn't exist. So this doesn't quite give any context to what I'm trying to do. So um, let's say we have this block right here um, for introduction. We wanna go ahead and unlock it for web editing um, and then provide a task assigned to it. So it says editable block and edit block description. What this means is when I'm in a test ticket mode, so if I hit F3, um, when I'm editing this piece of content as a transactional user, I am now able, you can see we have a dotted line around the block where we're allowed to edit, but we have a task in the right hand side that says you were able to edit this area and so I can start making changes. So I can hit make changes. Now the, the, the thing is when we're doing tickets, those are a one-time thing, it's a snapshot, it's not persistent. So if I were to uh, try to push this to production, it'll go out the door and can mail or email accordingly but the next time I load up a, a template or a ticket specifically for this, it will not show these changes. So this is a one-time thing when we're in a ticket scenario, right? Um, when we're in this remote authoring, any changes I make here and I push to production um, are gonna be essentially persisted the next time I open a ticket or the next time I try to create a ticket from a a, a template so um, that is just one thing to, to know about and I don't think we're using any external blocks in this so I'm going to have to find a way to find um, a template and that uses external blocks because that's what I want to do so let's see here um, as you guys can see we have table support which uh, we have a lot better support for tables we can just right click and say insert footer, insert header, insert a row above, below, column, left, right. Um, we have a lot better table support. We can re shrink and reduce the size of a table. And as you can see, it's not a pixel width, it's a percentage width. So we can say, okay, let's look at it at, and in this case you can saw it was like about 4%. Um, we can define what that's gonna be. Uh, you know what else works? Control Z. So if you're used to hotkeys, um, such as undo, copy, paste, all those hotkeys do work in interactive as well. So as you can see, I did control Y to redo and then control Z to undo. 
So if you're used to using hotkeys, a lot of those hotkeys are persistent into the interactive software. All right, let's see what else is there. Um, being able to drag content around to wherever you want to put it is pretty awesome, right? So let's um, let's go to one of my favorite features, which is uh, showing a block in context. I want to show that to you guys real quick. And we have to go to blocks. So let's say we were told to make a change. Um, makes my heart beat fast with that controls the action, <laughs> right? Exactly. So um, I, I live for the control Z because a lot of times I make mistakes and I have to undo it. Um, that's why control Y is such a good tool as well, because you're able to redo what you undid if you accidentally undid. So undo. So let's take a look at uh, real quick at any block. Um, this contact. So if I were to create a draft of it, let's see. So I'm able to see as a content editor, it is just basically questions, whatnot. And let's say I got a, um, whatchamacallit, I got to change to say, you know what, our website is not healthcare form, it is healthcare survey. And that was the change I made. But I want to see what this is going to look like. Oh, you know what, let's, let's change this uh, heading also to main title. I want to see what this is going to do to my template because when I'm viewing a block and I'm editing a block in this context, I don't know what it's going to do to page sizing. Uh, I don't know what it's going to do to page flowing. Um, in the past, you used to have to produce it or put it into a state, run what's called a pre-flight check. Um, and, and then you were just having to do like almost like a test run, right? But now with the ability, we can go into block properties and look at all our dependencies. So this is used in, this is, I would choose a block that's not used in a template right now, wouldn't I? Um, let me go ahead and close this and, um, and get rid of that. I, I need to find one that is actually used. So probably this one. I would pick a block that's not used. So let's do this. Um, achievements, use that one. Okay. If this, yeah. Okay. Let me check achievements. Thank you. I don't normally work with the demo solution. I end up building my own stuff. So um, it is not used by any template. That is interesting. You know what? We're going to make this work. Um, let's go to templates. And we're going to create our own real quick. Um, let's get edit this. Sometimes when things don't work, you just make your own, right? So I'm going to copy this paragraph one and I want to show some stuff real quick. Hold on. Um, we're going to keep this block open, but I just wanted to copy the text and I'm going to create a new block real quick. Um, and before I do that, I'm going to switch to Patricia. So one thing in interactive to know about is we have what's called approval, um, approval workflows or it's called approval processes, so to speak. Um, the ability to say, if I am this user, um, this user can only do one or two things. So in the case of Bob, he could only make changes, but he couldn't prove or approve anything to production without a supervisor. And then what we did is we also created a supervisor role that says, you know what, whether I created the content or Bob created the content, whatever, I can approve uh, for production use, so to speak. So you can see we created this block, uh, we called it paragraph one. And because I am, um, and it would, um, You know, it is going to just be one of those days. All right. Uh, gold, silver, platinum. Let's try that one now. Everything I'm trying today is just not working. Hmm. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. Air 
here's what I am going to do. I am not going to play around anymore. Right. So this one's using the welcome letter master template. That's what's important. So if we go to templates, welcome letter master template, and I create a draft of this. We'll see all these salutation is it's using external block. So if I look at this, we can see dear client salutation, right? So I know this is an external block. Here's another cool thing um, to, to bring up, right? I can see under salutation that that's an external block. It's also when I hover over it telling me it's an external block, whereas this one is a local block. And, and that's part of it is there's many ways to add a block to a template. You can do a direct reference, which is called external, or you can do what these are doing, which are probably um, when you insert a flow, you can inside of here, you can insert a block specifically, right? So there, there's multiple ways to insert blocks into your templates, uh, depending on you can clone it or you can reference it. And in our case, we have salutation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to go look at the salutation block and it's taking me 10 minutes to get to this point, but we're here finally. Okay. So under a salutation, we have, remember we saw a dear clients title and the salutation. So you can see we're actually even using data variables, which is pretty cool. And if I ever want to preview this in my view, I can see dear Mr. Miles, and it's using our test data that we had assigned to the master template. Um, we can, in this case, also do data testing. So if we go over here, we can see that it's dear Mr. Miles, but what happens if I say um, Garapolo? And obviously I'm making names up. So if I hit apply, you can now see it says dear Mr. Garapolo, which is awesome in interactive to be able to make changes if we want to um, based off you can do languages or you can just do if you have rules built around uh, variables you can start seeing those right but what I want to see here is what happens if I change my styling and let's say I use the main title and we needed to make it bigger and, and brighter for whatever reason what is this gonna look like on the template I'm using so I'm able to go to the dependencies and I can see that this block was being used on the vital offer. It's being used on renewal, response to claim and welcome letter. So it allows me at any point to say, you know what, what is this going to do to the vital offer based off the styling or the changes I made just now? So I can see dear Mr. Miles, it's, it probably doesn't look right, right? But now I can see it in context that that's the case. I had a bit of overflow here where that probably shouldn't have come to this page because it's too large. But I'm able to do this on each and every on template that is being used on where in the past you would make the change and you would have to find all the templates um, with release 12. You can at least view in dependent view or what I like to call block draft view. Um, well, I don't like to call it that way. It's it's literally the technical term. So under the response to claim, if I view that one, we can see that we have this dear Mr. Miles. It, it just obviously it's clashing. This isn't going to be good for what we're trying to do. But now I have the power to view it in line, which is awesome. Right. So let's that's one cool thing I wanted to talk about. Another one is who's ever been given some changes and then they were asked sometime in their life to say you know what can you go ahead and make a um go ahead and approve my changes but they didn't tell you what they were asking you to approve um i know at least it's happened to me before so if i look under templates let's just use the the, the welcome letter here and i've been asked to make a change to this welcome letter um, let's say we were asked to updated text, come find me. 
oh yeah and then you had to make a spreadsheet so yeah that's the other thing is then not only were you asked to approve said changes you weren't told what changes needed to be approved in addition to that you had to be liable for all those changes and so you make a spreadsheet to try to find them all so this would be lost updated text come find me any communication imagine this is a 10 page long communication and i'm sending this to my supervisor please approve needs to be updated great thanks um when patricia and i'm switching my role here right where we're going to patricia when i tried to see that in my inbox okay great bob sent me a template draft to check he wants me to do something so i open up the draft but the problem is and you can see through um we have our, our it's not social commenting but it, it at least it's a history of comment history that says you know bob sent this to me please approve needs to be updated well what needs to be updated what, what did you change bob we have the ability to go under leave it no 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 where's it at okay it's right here so you can do control shift c if you're a hotkey person or you can just hit this compare button and a drop down is going to say okay in my current view i want to see this from what state do i want to see it from the day it was created or do i want to see it from the time it was sent to check so i want to see from the created state what's the difference so what it's going to do it's going to run a comparison check and based off this it's going to say that i changed this piece of text anything in green yeah uh, gustavo um the, the the comparison is amazing especially when you get into long documents where you have hundreds of pages and you want to see all the changes this allows you to quickly see okay in green was anything added anything in red was removed so i can see that we even though there's a bit of overlap with the word policy i can see updated text come find me has been added but the rest of the document hasn't been modified at all um so i don't have to sit here with version a and version b side by side reading uh, character by character and some people are glutton for punishment kind of like joanna who they like doing that kind of stuff me personally i rather just know exactly where it got changed and moved on right i got more stuff to do than just to uh to do comparison so we can finish comparison and we can say uh whether we can refuse it remember we talked about these approval processes right i can promote it and say go ahead and put this in production or i can refuse it and send it back to bob and say what kind of text was that is this joke to you and then obviously we're gonna have to have a personnel meeting about bob trying to be funny um with his his antics right but the idea is here is when bob comes back in he's going to see that he got a refused draft um it came back to him by patricia that says it was refused <laughs> fire bob <laughs> no but the, the the idea is we can now see that you know as maybe as an it administrator or somebody in some auditing point of view can say okay great somebody created a template they sent it to check it got refused so we have an audit trail of what's happened to every single change so he can come back here and delete any kind of changes he made and we can go back to saying um original version with correct changes and what it is is maybe say we want to have policy bolded so let's find our bold style. We should have one, right? But maybe not bold, we'll find one. Um, maybe we just wanna have Paul. Is that a paragraph style? That was, okay. I just wanna bold it. There we go. We just wanted a bold policy this whole time. Okay, so we're gonna switch back to Patricia so she can see the correct changes and then she can promote it to production from there. So now when she comes in, she can see in her draft inbox that she's got another check here. 
and again just to be to be safe here she can do her comparison check to say okay what actually changed um because we've gone back and forth a few times she can say okay what changed from the last time i sent this and it, it helps if you don't if you hit the right button i hit the wrong button so i can say look at the current version from what was refused or from what was created so ultimately we can view this um, from what were the original and because i made some text changes you can see the whole paragraph um, had a different um different styling but let's just say uh, we have the ability to, to do that so this was just a little overzealous on my part so apologize there and so we're just going to delete the the draft and kind of just move on but we could promote it if we wanted to um so we're about halfway through um is there anything you guys want to see or talk about that you've seen that looks interesting um i can kind of cover or we can kind of keep moving on we have display rules to talk about um, i do want to talk about style definitions as a brand new feature uh, that has been added that's something that is um, not a lot know about so i want to talk about that the rules to narrow down selections okay so for instance i assume bad kitty you're talking about display rules so in the case of silver gold or platinum i think you mentioned that a bit earlier is somebody in maybe IT, you don't have to script um, display rules. So let's say we have a piece of data. If field X equals silver or field X equals gold or field X equals platinum, do something in some sort of design, right? So let's go ahead and view the rule and see what's happening here. And this one's already built. So obviously if silver partnership is true, or gold partnership or platinum partnership. What is this? So let's go ahead and view it in edit mode. So it, it, this is actually categorization, if I'm not mistaken, or I take it back, it's rules with other rules. So as I'm looking at this, we already have rules that say, okay, is it a gold partnership? So let's go back to our rules and create a draft of gold partnership. What defines a gold partnership rule? Is that if a variable, and you can tell that because of this ST, notice it says string, um, but if you look at the, the path underneath the word partnership, it says data.clients.partnership. Well, what that is, is if you look at a data structure, it's saying from the root data under the sub root of clients, the field partnership must equal to gold. Now you could say it equals to, um, it begins with containing, ending with, and you can see the multitude of options we have here. And then we can actually hand type what we want to look into here. So we can add more conditions. We can create grouping to where if we have to have a compound a rule, the whole purpose of building display rules is that somebody can create a um, either simplistic or complex rule set and reuse that from template to template. So we can see we created a simple rule called gold. It, if partnership equals gold. And from what I can tell in the demo solution, we also created one for platinum, silver. So we, we created these simple, is it gold, is it platinum, or is it silver? And then we created another rule set that said, you know what? I don't want to have to create that rule again because we already created it once. Just determine if silver is true or gold is true or platinum is true. If it's any one of those are true, we're going to do something, which in the case is it's not bronze. Um, but the, the point is you can use rules on top of rules. So we could create another rule set if we wanted to that said, um, well, what if it's silver, gold, and platinum, and not bronze? We can, we can keep uh, compounding rules if we wanted to. So rules are pretty powerful, but that's not showing you guys what it is yet. And, and I wanna to get to that point. So let's go ahead and look at a template that uses the gold, silver, or platinum. And do you remember which template uses that rule? Uh, Bad Kitty Gates not i don't remember exactly which one i can look it up and look at uh 
you know what i'm gonna do something so i can show you guys this isn't in interactive directly the the gold silver or partner just any of the rules i just want to show how we can do data testing to show what it looks like but i do want to show um if you have access to icm because interactive uses icm and if you look under interactive vital um, there's a folder called rules so these are all the rules and as you notice we have the same ones we have gold platinum silver and the silver platinum and partnership right so let's say we have our silver one well who's using that so i can do what's called a recursive or dependency browser i can see these are all the things that have some sort of connection to the silver partnership rule so when i look at this i can tell it's under a renewal under vital renewal i am referencing this rule so i'm going to go ahead and go to the vital renewal template so if i go create a draft of this we're gonna hopefully find in this template a usage of that rule and i'm looking for it so that's here right here under this flow it looks like um from what i can tell this is an inline variant so there's, there's many different ways you can apply rules. You can apply rules to blocks. So if I wanted this whole block, um, I just reordered it. <laughs> oh, well, if I wanted this whole block to show up only if it's silver, gold, or platinum, right? So obviously we have our silver, we have our gold, and we have our platinum, but I don't want the block to show up. Let's say if it's bronze, just speaking that out loud. I can create my own rules and use variables and do all this kind of stuff manually, right? Or I can just reuse already built rules. So why do we care? Let's say you have a rule that says if it's Texas and the, let's say policy amount is over 10,000, then you have a rule that's according to that. And you can just drag the rule in and say, if the rule is true, I want you to show this whole block and you can tell that there's a display rule used because we have a check mark. So if I were to go to proof this, we can see because, and I bet you, if I look at data testing, why has this got an exclamation point? I'm not sure if we go look at, oh, cause the policy value is over 25,000. It's probably telling me and vital quote has a lot of, uh, rules I can do right so I'm looking for gold looking for and you know what if I need to find this um, partnership so we have a filter here so if you're looking for variables that in a very big data set you can use just f3 which is essentially search if I change this partnership and you can see it's gold what if I change it to silver and I click ok oh it's not going to let me until I satisfy this requirement there we go hit apply because it was over twenty five thousand. it doesn't it doesn't like something so i can see now it's a silver right but what if it says bronze um must be smaller than current policy value i don't know why this template's making me do that but um it is what it is for right now, but I wanna look for partnership here. What I wanted to show real quick is if, let's say I used bronze and I hit apply, we should see that paragraph not show up at all now. And as you can see, there is no paragraph. So the, the whole point of this was that you can apply rules to, to the blocks that you're assigning into your templates just by using rebuilt rules. In addition to that, you'll notice that the we have what's called inline variants. And let me show you what that is, essentially. Uh, let's say we're going into the welcome kit. Inline variants is another really cool thing is what if I have just a piece of word or what if I have a sentence I just want to show? Uh, let's say this. I am sure we'll be able to accommodate. 
uh, let's just say I want to include that. So we have an option that says either A or B to show that. So what I can do is I can, you just right click and say create inline variant wherever you want to. And it's going to say, do you want to use a, a current variable? So if you had any tasks or um, variable set up for this, you could do that. Or you can create a new one that says inline variant. Let's just say, um, we'll call this test one. That will say the variant rule values are yes and no. So this is a simple yes, no question. And under my task is, do we include text? And the answer here would be yes or no. So you don't have to in the past, what you had to do is you had to go back to your master template designer in the designer software, have them build all this stuff. But now you can do this on the fly. So we have our yes or no options. As you can see, they're both right here. So in the case of no, I don't want to include anything. But in the case of yes, I want to add two spaces and paste that line. So a way to do this is if we go under uh, test ticket, because ultimately this is for um, inline variants is really for people doing um, the stuff in, does that go back and update designer? So no, Andy, this does not update designer. This actually updates the template itself. So if you were to open this in designer, okay, it can be seen in designer. This is not making a change to the master template. It is making a change to the template itself. So you can make um, tasks and those kind of template or uh, temporary variables available specifically in templates and not do it in, in the master template. In the past, you had to do it in the master template and every template there would have the same rule or same task. Now that we've uh, broken that off and said each template can have its own task, or its own rules around it. It allows you to, um, let's say template A could have a different description than template B trying to do something. So um, does that, hopefully that answers your question, Andy, is that it can be seen in designer if you open the JLD, but it is not part of the master template. It is part of the template itself. Um, so as you guys can see, we have this text here that says, do we include the paragraph, yes or no? So if I say no, then it's not there, but if I say yes, it shows up now. So that that's um, that's inline variants are really cool in the sense that you want to maybe change a couple of words here and there based off of a question um, or display rule, whatever the case may be. And again, utilizing that test ticket, I'm able to essentially um, play with that, right? So. Um, I don't have to try to, a lot of times people in the past would go to designer to do all this stuff. Uh, we don't have to do that anymore. And one of the last things I wanted to just cross off my plate today was, and I got to remember who has access to this, but it's the company styles or style definition is what it's called. So if we go to our style definitions, and we want to see what, um, for those of you who don't know what styles are, in the past in designer, if I were to have a master template, let's say this A stream that I built, we would go under window, or I'm sorry, format and create an external styles. So let's say this company styles master quicksand. Um, so what, what is a, a master style? So usually you put textiles in there. So anything you see in this, this blue, is not part of this master template. It's actually part of a referenced um, workflow that has all this information in it. So that way we don't have to, um, we could share that across many different master templates or many different templates. And we can create what's considered like a branding style guide uh, that would work with paragraph styles, fonts, um, colors, all that kind of information, right? So, what we did is to try to enable the business user. We enabled the ability to change this stuff in interactive now. You don't have to be a power user and designer to do it anymore. So if I were to create a draft 
of the vital styles and, and from what you saw today, a couple of those styles you'll see through here. But I have the ability through a web GUI um, to be able to change my styling. So for instance, um, let's say small normal. I get a, a preview of what small normal looks like here. I can rename it. I can change the font. Um, we can change all these kind of parameters that were in designer, but they're now in, um, they're now in interactive. And what does this mean, right? So you can actually get marketing specialists who are in charge of your branding doing what they do rather than getting a set of instructions to a IT person or a designer professional, they can actually make these changes. Uh, once they realize what they can and cannot do. So for instance, they can access different fill styles that have been created. Um, you can create a new textile, a hyperlink properties, the whole nine. So if I were to say, you know what, I want small normal to actually look like size 10, we're gonna get an example of what that looks like. But, or we want the color to be the blue. Or actually let's, let's do something that you can actually see a difference. And there's cases where if it's really complex colors, you can't see, but in the case of hyperlink, we see it's blue there now, right? We can show available styles or all styles. Um, we have the ability to um, create new and what we can manage in here are textiles, paragraph styles, table and color. Now table styles is a really cool concept in the sense of, let's see if we have any, so I can show you guys what that is. Um, table styles, a lot of times when we build tables in the past, our header row looks a certain way, our um, transaction lines look a certain way, and then our footer looks a different way. We have the ability to define all these preferences to where our first column's blue, our odd rows are gray background, and our even rows are white background. So we can create a table style that's reusable that shows exactly how this is. Um, and then we have access to be able to change different kind of border options and say and so forth, right? Um, displays a selected did and <laughs> here's what I do love, right? So we've seen this table. Let's go ahead and make a change to this fill color right here and change it green just so we can see, okay, um, when this happens, what kind of, you know, what kind of impact is this? So I can say, show me with these new styles, what's gonna happen. And this one looks like the table that we, we would have, right? Show me with, um, with this template, what did the style change I just make look like? And I am not seeing it. So I used the wrong table for that. So let's go to the other table. We've got multiple table styles here. This one looks like it may be it. Let's see, make it yellow, and then let's make our footer some other ugly color, let's see, blue. And we wanna do what's called impact analysis. We are gonna pick, this is kinda of like that uh, draft view with blocks, but this is more styles. Okay, that's not the table. You know, I probably should know these things, but I always build my own thing, and I don't really pay much attention to uh, what's in the demo solution because I'm more building than I am demoing so my apologies we're gonna try this one more time I've, I've modified every single table so we should see what this looks like now all right that is not working so I'm doing something wrong guys I don't know what I need to do um, Either that or um, I'm not seeing something that's, I'm wondering if those aren't using table styles. Let's go ahead and promote this. You know what? And I wanna show this in use. Maybe that's the problem is it, it wasn't using a table style. Um, some of these templates were built long before style definitions were available. So I'm wondering if that's part of the problem and let's take a look. Not exactly sure. Ah, when I view it in this mode, it shows up. So I was doing something wrong there that I haven't, um, maybe I needed to commit my change. 
but yet when I preview it, it it's not previewing it the right way so there's definitely something I need to do um, that I'm not seeing so my apologies it may be a configuration item thing all right does anybody else in chat have any other ideas of what they would like to see um, I know we have data definitions and that's a whole nother conversation in its own um, we have display rules we also have interactive processes I'm just trying to find some cool cool little things that you can do in interactive that are interesting so let's take a look here let me switch my user back to a supervisor here can you spell check you know what um, shame on me I should already know this but I am not sure I don't think you can spell check you can do what's called text assistant which is essentially um, if you're trying to translate from English to French or English to Spanish if you build in a text assistant program it, it'll allow you to do that um, so we have this translation uh, possibly if we have let's say this paragraph is a letter if we want to try to translate from English to Spanish it's going to run through some back-end process um, that says okay this is what we recommend as the language we're not saying this is exactly right this is um, as a demo solution if you build in that kind of logic but uh, if you have a translation text assistant built in you could do that which is pretty cool you could then copy that to the clipboard and paste it in um, but I don't think we have a a spell check um, to be honest I haven't found one um, right what we do have though it's not exactly a spell check of, of sort but it is your standard kind of Microsoft Word scenario where you can right click and let's say I, I misspelled paragraph here oh here let me get rid of that Let's, um, let's see here. My Patricia. Let's try this again. All right, let's see. I misspell paragraph. It's not letting me edit anything right now, and it probably has. Oh, because it's assigned to Bob. I need to get this thing assigned back to me. That's the problem here. Okay, open draft, and I I don't know if Patricia can do this in our approval process. Yeah, let's go ahead and reassign it to ourselves. And so now, when I open the draft, it is assigned to me. And I should be able to make changes now. So if I were to, let's say, misspell paragraph, it's not a direct spell check, but we can see if we right click it, it did have a squiggly red line and we can select the correct uh, lettering, but it's not a, a foolproof spell check method. Um, unless I'm mistaken, um, I have not found a spell check method as of yet. So, um, we should put that as an NFR, um, and this would be a great use case in the, in the sense, um, what's the other cool? So you can bring in documents. So we talked about being able to drag blocks in, so I could just drag this block in anywhere into the document I want to, but you can also bring in, uh, full on documents, other templates, instances, and attachments. So it doesn't have to just be a block. And to what Joanna was talking about on Thursday uh, with her variable content, you actually have the ability to bring in variable content um, based off of a variable. 
So if you have something that's doing variable content already, in Interactive, you can bring in a variable content block that's gonna do the same logic. Um, draw again a block and unlock it to edit it. So to tables two, um, I haven't played with variable content enough to know whether tables do work or not. So that'd be something hint hint to investigate. I'm not exactly sure, right? So there's a couple different ways um, Bad Kitty Gates talked about show how you can drag a block in and unlock it to edit it. So there's two different ways. If you drag a block in, let's say we use, um, And I won't be able to do this in this template because we're, we're not on one of the vital templates. We're using that custom one I built, right? So if we have this vital renewal and we take a look um, and we wanna bring a, a block in. So when you bring a block in, let's say content, contact right here, we bring it in as our first block. You can't unlock it because you're bringing it in as a reference. It's something that's external. But what you can do is, let's say I wanted to go ahead and delete it. And let's say I think make local is what you're talking about. And then essentially what it's doing is it's bringing the block in, but it just cloned it to where this version is now, I can edit it however I want. But I can still have the original contact block ahead of it. What you, what you used to have to do um, to bring it to where you can start modifying it at this point is, let me go ahead and delete this and delete this. The old method was you had to put in an empty block and then inside here, um, you actually had to say insert block and then you had to go find the block and then insert it and then now you had it. Whereas the new method, um, we, we made it much, much quicker, right? So if I just bring this block in, come on, let's see here. Now I'm gonna stop trying to insert the block. There we go. So we're gonna bring in the contact block and we, we can tell we can't modify it, right? I am, I'm hitting keys because it's a external block. If we say, you know what, we don't want to make this external anymore. I need to make changes for this template and this template alone. I can make local and then we can start making changes, but that external block does not change. Just this one instance in this template changes. So we went from what, five or six clicks down to a single button click. And if we go back and look at it again, it was what's called make local. So that is brand new and that's pretty awesome. Um, let's see, we, I mean, there's so many features in interactive. Um, we spend so many hours of R and D time into interactive that I literally can probably spend all day talking about each and every one, you know, ranging from um, being able to add comments to certain sections or viewing comments, um, you know, finding text in, let's say a very long document, uh, viewing email previews. So I wanna see what this email looks like, uh, but I wanna see what it's gonna look like on my tablet. Um, to where, you know, we can view the dynamic communications. Uh, we can add attachments, we can make changes to variable properties so we can unlock or allow them for ticket usage um change our viewports so if we want to zoom in on a certain piece of communication you can do that Oof. what else is there local printing multiple records uh this is called an outline so if you have let's say a long document that has 200 blocks in it, you can create what's called an outline. That's going to give you a very quick view that says, okay, here's what's being brought in. You can tell this is an external block. 
this is considered a a group with a display rule set and these blocks are being pulled in this is a variant block um, you can lock or unlock it for document editing um, so that's that's considered an outline and that's this button right here so you can show the outline or not depending on what you want to do you can also get rid of headers so if you want to get this in a close to um, realistic view as possible you can get rid of those headers you can also collapse them all or expand them all which is um, just more you know viewing purposes right this is all about trying to see uh, what's viewable what's not so today in just an hour I wanted to show some of the cool things obviously I tripped up on a few of the demo solutions of what's available how it was built um, I didn't build out any of these use cases uh, for this specific stream because um, I've been pretty tied up lately so I apologize for the the mumble jumble of what happened today so I do appreciate everybody coming out and at least listening to me talk about interactive um, I think it's a really 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 cool piece of software that allows um, as the the code phrase Betty from the front office can use it or you know Michael from the front office they can use it uh, you don't need a trained designer professional to make changes anymore um, if you have word experience you can make changes to interactive ultimately right so that's what it is um, also just so you guys know we're gonna be probably moving this time slot uh, to the four o'clock time slot central so we're gonna move back an hour um, Michael X or Michael Y <laughs> I don't know but we're gonna be moving the time slot back an hour um, so we're gonna be doing it at the same time as Joanna does on Thursdays so it's gonna be four central or five Eastern I think right at yeah, time zones and we're gonna be keep going for an hour but we're just gonna move it back an hour so that way it's the the same time zone so I appreciate everybody coming out thank you for your time if you have any questions please hit us up on email um, if you don't have that email it's quadiantwitch at gmail.com and if you guys are not subscribers as you notice the quadiant user has a special three month subscriber badge so the longer you guys are subscribers you get different badges um, also you get the usage of emotes so you can get the usage of the proof emote the hotkey or the quad emote depending on which subscription level you guys are um what else any donations or tips or cheers uh you're going to be able to um they do donate to the channel but they go to saint jude's so it's all going to 100% rolled over to a great cause um, does not go to us whatsoever we're here for you guys so um, thank you for coming out and I hope to see you guys next week and Joanna will be streaming on Thursday at 4 p.m. central so how do you do cheers so Kathy um, what you're gonna do is next to the smiley face where you type in messages there's a little diamond icon where it kind of looks like a diamond I could say it looks like a garden gnome if you click that um there is a little pop-up that talks about cheering you can i think you can watch ads or for free uh, they're called bits so you're looking for bits um, but you can watch ads for them i think or you can pay some money to twitch and buy bits and then it's just a matter of hitting that and and doing a cheer so um, as you notice in the top, you'll see that uh, this guy named Stoby, whoever he is, has cheered 200 and Andy's done 50 and Scott is in his traditional self usually doing one at a time. So he's got 13 at this point, but you can get to the top of the leaderboard um, if you want to, just saying, but nonetheless, all those cheers do go to uh, charity. So. Um, if anybody has any questions, hit us up on email and thank you for coming out and hope everybody has a great day. See you guys.